Madea, Patrick O'Miel Okecho is my name. I work with the Health Information Systems Program as a DHIS2 uh, implementer. And today I'm privileged to present to you uh, a web-based application called DHIS2 uh, Climate uh, Data App. Uh, this data uh, application is uh, developed to facilitate integration of climate data into the DHIS2 uh, platform. So what's the DHIS2? DHIS2 stands for District Health Information Software. It is developed and maintained by the HISP Center at the University of Oslo and uh, it is used in over 80 uh, countries, um, in over 80 countries globally, mainly in low and middle in income countries uh, to collect, manage and analyze uh, health data and this makes it uh, the, the world's largest health management uh, information platform. It is a web-based and open uh, source uh, software platform and uh, it is highly uh, customizable uh, but also the functionalities can be extended uh, via the, uh, the custom application uh, but also leveraging on the web APIs uh, that um, is fully developed within this platform. Uh, so, uh, so with the current uh, challenge uh, of uh, climate change, uh, DHIS2 uh, has been fronted uh, to uh, make a... So with the current challenge of uh, climate change that is known to impact uh, health outcomes, and with the growing um, need for health systems to adapt and to develop uh, mitigation uh, measures, the HISP Center, with support from uh, Wellcome Trust and partners, have embarked on enhancing the DHIS2 uh, platform to integrate uh, health data. And this comes uh, from the backdrop, the backdrop that DHIS2 has already been collecting um, a lot of the health data uh, as you can see here uh, illustrated. Uh, and so what they've been able to do is to integrate uh, this data using this application, uh, the DHIS2 uh, climate uh, data application uh, that uh, simply integrates data uh, from a source uh, called ERA5, but through the Google Earth engine, as you can see. Uh, and also from the Norwegian Meteorological Institute uh, through this uh, web API. Uh, so the two um, uh, the two sources or the two uh, points actually provide uh, this data that is then integrated into uh, the DHIS2. Uh, for the Google Earth Engine, we're able to get uh, the past weather and climate uh, data and uh, for the, uh, the MET uh, weather API, we're able to get the 10-day weather forecast. Uh, but as you can see, this data comes through the, uh, the weather stations uh, that gets reported uh, to the World Meteorological Organization uh, that provides uh, this data uh, to the ECMWF uh, that does reanalysis of this data and makes it available uh, through the Google Earth Engine. So what does this application do? This application uh, supports uh, a user to explore this data within the DHIS2 uh, and then later it allows them to import this data into the DHIS2. And for start we are looking at temperature, precipitation and humidity data. Uh, that's the first uh, set that we are looking at. Uh, but uh, the source could provide up to 50 uh, variables. So this process of integration also provides for automatic calculation of values uh, or these parameters to be able to fit within the organization units that uh, DHIS2 uh, uses to uh, collect uh, data. I already mentioned that uh, it also allows to you, it also uh, presents a 10 day weather focus uh, for facilities or point locations. Uh, so, uh, data that is imported is daily, uh, but also we are looking into the monthly uh, 
in some cases. So what this does, as already indicated, it allows you to explore this data. And then once you import this data into DHIS2, then you can uh, then analyze this data using the DHIS2 analytic features. And here you then uh, start uh, to combine or translate uh, health and climate data uh, to basically generate the meaningful uh, insights that you would want uh, to see out of this data. Uh, but uh, the most important is to be able to have uh, uh, analysis uh, that uh, is able to inform programs, uh, what we call climate-informed health programming. Um, yes, so um, to install this application, it is quite uh, simple. Uh, all you need is to make sure that you have the right versions of, or version of, your D of the DHIS2. Uh, to install this uh, application is quite simple. You need to have the right version of the DHIS2. Uh, we are looking at uh, from version uh, 2.37 uh, plus. Uh, make sure that uh, your organization unit or your administrative structures have georeferenced. Uh, you also have to uh, ensure that uh, you, your, your DHIS2 instance uh, is connected uh, to the Google Earth engine. And lastly, you need to set up the metadata uh, that allows uh, for data import. And this is what we call the data elements and the, the data sets uh, in the DHIS2. To install this data, is, I mean, to install this application, it's quite simple. All you need is uh, the right version of the DHIS2. Uh, your organization units must be georeferenced. Uh, the uh, the instance should be uh, configured to access the Google Earth engine, and then lastly, you should have the metadata that allows for data capture within the DHIS2. And here we're looking at data elements and uh, data sets that can allow you to uh, import data into DHIS2. Uh, so I'll right away go into the demo. Uh, of this uh, instance. So for you to be able to um, uh, use this application, you need to of course uh, make sure that uh, you have it installed in your DHIS2 and then you come in here and log in. I'll simply put my login here uh, and so once you log in to the DHIS2, the first thing you'll definitely see is this dashboard. Uh, that uh, you can see already has some data uh, that we've uh, put up for the, the demo. So we have this small dashboard uh, called uh, climate and malaria. So basically here we are trying to look at climate data and malaria data. Uh, and we'll come back to that shortly, but let's go straight to the application. So for all the DHIS2, this is where you have got the applications uh, all uh, that's running within this uh, instance. So I look for this one, climate data. So when I click on that, uh, it will right away go to uh, this tab, explore data, but I'll come back to that later. So uh, I'll start by looking at the settings. It's very important that you have your settings right. Uh, and here you can change the time zone and also the default uh, page for users, uh, the default start page that you want for, to load for every user. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you have a guide here that uh, uh, can help you uh, create the metadata uh, to allow for the import. Uh, and then at the home page, you have uh, information about the application, but also about the data source. We have a video here that you can play and be able to understand more about uh, the process of reanalysis. Uh, and then uh, you can then start the uh, go into uh, exploring the data. And uh, to be able to explore the data, uh, this application brings for you all the organization unit structure within your DHIS2. Uh, and then uh, for this case, you can see that we have uh, the national level, the province, uh, the district, uh, and then the health facility. Let's start by exploring data at a given health facility. So if I click on this health facility, 
as long as it has the geolocation, right, the geo coordinate, I should be able then to quickly look at the weather forecast. So this is the weather forecast as of, as of today when I'm doing this presentation. Uh, you can also look at the temperature trends, uh, and this is for a period starting April to March uh, this year. You can see the temperature trends, uh, and this can be daily and monthly. Uh, you can also look at uh, precipitation, uh, and here you can also look at uh, both monthly and daily uh, precipitation. Uh, this tool allows you to zoom in if you want to have a deeper look at some of the uh, uh, the spikes that you're probably observing. Uh, you can see this one uh, up to 60 millimeters. Uh, then uh, humidity is also provided for, and here you can look at uh, both monthly and also uh, daily uh, trends uh, for humidity. And here for humidity, we are looking at relative humidity, uh, the average uh, relative humidity. Uh, then we have the normal uh, uh, that is based on a reference period. We have the dew point temperature and the air temperature. These temperature uh, values help to compare, I mean, helps to, uh, when you're looking at uh, humidity, uh, it's good to look at it alongside these temperature values. And lastly, uh, we have um, a provision to be able to look at uh, climate change. And here we're looking at the change right from uh, 1970 uh, up to uh, this current year, 2024. And here you can look at the temperature changes over time. And this is an average for a given year. Uh, and here they look at uh, the difference between the normal temperature uh, and uh, the average temperature uh, for that given year. And that's what brings a difference. So uh, if you see consistently uh, more red, uh, then you, you're having uh, the positive change uh, in the climate, meaning that uh, there's an elevation in temperature uh, over time. So after exploring this data, uh, you then need to import uh, this data into your DHIS2. Uh, and just to say that I've been able to explore for facility, uh, but you could explore uh, at a district level. And for district level, you will not be able to observe the 10-day uh, the weather forecast. Uh, here we are basically looking at temperature, precipitation, humidity, and then the, uh, the climate change. So uh, let's go to data import. So for data import, uh, you click on uh, import data and you should be able to then select uh, the parameters that you want to import data for. So if I select uh, uh, temperature and then I can say I want to import this for just a month. So I'll just do that for up to uh, January of uh, uh, 2023 and I will pick out uh, this province uh, and then be able to of course specify the level and here we want to import for that same province and then I click import uh, so uh, then then so the process that's happening is that's able to then extract the data and then be able to import the data into the DHIS2 uh, so it's as simple as that uh, something to take care of is uh, usually if you have so much, so many levels that you're trying to import data for, it may be a bit slow, uh, but that shouldn't worry you. You can do that uh, in, in bits. Uh, but if you're just doing for one province for a period of time, that should not be a problem. That should be pretty fast. Uh, so uh, let's go to look at the data entry to see uh, if the data that we've imported has actually uh, been loaded into the system. So I'll go to this facility and I look at, uh, pick the form, uh, I pick a period that we imported data for, it was last year in January. Uh, so I'll scroll up to January any date. Uh, so there we should be able to see that uh, our temperature, air temperature data has actually uh, been uh, imported uh, into the DHIS2 instance. So after you've imported this data, the next thing, next thing that you would want to do is definitely to analyze your data. And uh, as you can see, 
uh, we've been able to create um, a dashboard based on data that has been imported. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, this first graph, uh, it's uh, basically looking at uh, the trends of malaria uh, with relative humidity. And even when it's, it's demonstration uh, data, like you can see, you can see a pattern uh, that uh, is quite consistent uh, for these two uh, variables. Uh, we also able to do uh, uh, a map uh, that uh, you can do uh, a layer uh, for humidity and then put um, another layer for uh, the malaria cases and then be able to make sense out of that. We, lastly, we also have uh, uh, what we call a split map uh, that DHIS2 can actually help you uh, come up with a split map uh, that shows uh, uh, different maps for the different months uh, and then be able to look at the trends of uh, humidity or any other climate data for the different months. And here you can visually see that uh, humidity was quite high in the month of October and much less in the month of uh, March uh, that we are currently uh, in. Uh, so that's really how you are able to analyze this data and a lot is yet to come in terms of uh, analyzing uh, and uh, uh, even modeling and prediction uh, based on this data that we are importing. Uh, so what are some of the quality issues that you need to pay attention to? You need to, to be mindful that uh, even when this is global data, somehow this data uh, comes from uh, weather stations. Uh, and so um, the more weather stations that uh, we have that uh, feeds data uh, to WM WMO, uh, the better uh, quality of this data uh, uh, you would have. Because then it, when you start to compare local data and global data, a good example of uh, this, you will see that this is pretty close because uh, uh, the local weather stations uh, are quite dense uh, for, for this data. And so when you bring in the global data, you see they are quite uh, close. It's also important to pay attention to areas that are mountainous uh, or coastal, uh, as some of those uh, may not uh, have data uh, provided for, but also uh, you, it may be a challenge that some of those areas cannot easily be observed or their data cannot easily be collected. So when you look at uh, such uh, anomalies, it will be very important for you to see how to fix that. Uh, but the most importantly, uh, most importantly is for you to be able to always compare your local data with the global data. And uh, the thing to look out for is mainly on the trends. Uh, a good example of this one, where you can see that the local data is, it varies if you look at this keenly, but overall you're seeing a similar pattern of global data and uh, uh, the local data. Uh, so I beg to end there, but, but say thank you uh, to you all uh, for listening to me.